Alrighty guys, today I've got some drills for you to help you become more comfortable around the net, approaching the net, volleys and overheads. Now the purpose of this drill, it's, it's cooperative. You're not trying to win the point. You're working on your control, so you're hitting... Our student here today is Tom. He's hitting everything down the middle. Um, we're going to start off with a three ball a drill, then we're going to go to a six ball. Okay, the first one, we're just going to hit a few ground strokes and I'm going to hit him a short ball. He's going to hit his approach, maybe with top spin, maybe under spin. Come to the net, hit a volley, everything down the middle, and then the overhead down the middle. Then we're going to go to a six ball drill. He'll hit uh, a couple of more shots in there. Forehand, backhand, short ball, come in, forehand volley, backhand volley, and then the overhead. So you're working on your consistency here, and once you can do this drill consistently, then you can start, you know, to take it up a notch, go for the drop volleys, the little short angled volleys, and to put the overheads away. Okay, so remember, as you're practicing this type of thing, you want to focus on a couple of concepts, a couple of points. Like pick one or two max. Never think of more than two things. But two is going to be okay. If you can think of two, it's really gonna help you really burn that new signal in the brain. Okay, here we go. Go! Here he is, coming in on a short one. Good. Good volley, good volley, overhead. That's it, excellent. All right, here we go. Go! He's coming in. Top spin, good volley, and the overhead. Nice. You're working on your control. Go! Here's a slice, nice, nice, good, overhead, excellent. Forehand, you know, he's going with the backhand, slice, beautiful, he's coming in, nice, volley, volley, one more volley, backhand, good, perfect. Okay, so that's the idea. Do this with a friend or a pro. Work on your control and your consistency. Then take it up a notch with the short angled volleys and putting the overheads away. All the best. Okay, if your underspin approach shots are going long, you have to remember that the racket face is only open 10 to 20 degrees when you're making contact. Many players have this notion that the racket is laid back way too much, and that just simply sends the ball floating. If the racket's laid back like that, the ball's just going to go up and float. So you have to think consciously close the face as you swing forward. So as you swing forward, Close up the face so it's only 10 to 20 degrees laid back. You don't want to be like this. Now another reason may be that you're, you're swinging too horizontal. Remember, for every degree that you lay the racket back, you have to increase the angle at which you swing down. So if you're open 10 or 20 degrees, you have to get the racket up. You've got to get the racket up and then swing down as you hit. That will tend to keep the ball lower. Now, theoretically, you could have the racket face open, say, 45 degrees on, a, uh, on an approach shot, but that means you're going to have to increase the angle now. Remember, every degree you open it, you have to get the racket up higher. So now you're going to be way up here if you're open 45 degrees, and you've got to come down.
Another thing that can make your top spin approaches go long is that the racket face is open when you're hitting the ball. Remember, of course, you want to be vertical when you're hitting your top spin approach. Now, this, the mistake usually happens on the player's backswing. Well, I'll show you what I mean. From the ready position, the racket face is closed. Now, sometimes when players come back, they drop the elbow into the body. When the elbow drops in, notice the racket face is open. Now, you have to close the racket face on the forward swing to be vertical when you hit the ball. Here's a side view. Okay, I'm in my ready position. I bring the racket back, but the elbow drops in, the racket opens up. Now, as you swing forward, your racket face is laid back. You have to flick the wrist just at the right moment to be vertical. This is very risky business. Sometimes you'll hear players say, yeah, no problem, I'll just roll the racket over the ball for topspin. That's a common myth. You cannot do that. The ball is only on the strings for milliseconds. So you're swinging up with an open face. All these shots are long, 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 boom. When you get there, okay, that one stays in, but then all these are in the net. Really, that rolling over can really hurt your consistency on your topspin approach shots. So this is what you want to do. Keep the racket face closed on the backswing. Keep the elbow up away from the body. Now the racket's back and the racket is still closed. From here, you drop it down a foot below the ball and swing from your shoulder. Don't get wristy with the forearm and the wrist because that could cause the racket to get out of position. Remember, foot below, swing from the shoulder. You're guaranteed vertical over here. Now here's a side view. I'm in the ready position. I come back, the elbow stays away from the body, racket face is down. I drop it down a foot below the ball, swing up. Now, there's my contact. Okay, it's okay for the wrist to go this way on a top spin shot. If your wrist goes this way, you'll generate a little more spin, a little more RPMs on the ball, which will cause the ball to come down sooner. And that's a good thing on a top spin approach shot because you're hitting the ball in the mid-court area. So it's tough to hit it hard and keep it in. So it's good to think spin on that top spin approach shot. Okay, two key points to remember to prevent your top spin approaches going long. Increase the angle of your swing. When you increase that angle, you're gonna create more RPMs, more spin, it's gonna pull the ball down quicker. Number two, keep the elbow up and away from the body. Remember, if the elbow drops in, it's gonna open the racket face and possibly send the ball long. Keep the elbow up and away. Just think of making a target for the oncoming ball. See, now, if you were to hit a ball to this side, to my forehand, okay, I'm just going to make a target for the oncoming ball. I see the ball coming to this side, I turn, I make the target. Notice I keep my left hand on the throat of the racket. That ensures that I turn my shoulders and also I won't bring the racket back too far. So just turn, keep that hand on. Once you get to here, then you can let go. Now you're going to step in with the foot that's furthest away from the ball. So the ball's on this side, my left foot's further away. I'm gonna step in with that foot and just imagine that my hand is on the top of a table right now and I'm gonna slide my hand out across the table. So I step and slide the hand out. But the overhead is the least practice shot in the history of tennis. So you've gotta get out and practice this shot. It's a confident shot. It's not an easy shot trying to hit that ball dropping out of the sky. So get out and practice it. I've actually had students where they'll see a lob go up and they actually say, oh no. I mean, is it any wonder they're gonna miss the ball with that kind of an attitude? So what I tell them is, you have to learn to love the shot. You've got to create a new signal in the brain. So instead of saying, oh no, when you see that ball go up, you should be thinking, oh yes, I love these shots. That way you'll start to create a new signal in the brain.